Capturing photos of an aurora is an amazing experience and for some people a little bit life-changing. There's just something so magical about seeing those colours dancing across the sky. I remember the first time I caught an aurora in camera and it was an amazing feeling. I was just doing a happy dance on the beach because initially I actually thought my camera was starting to malfunction. I was out there taking a big wide panorama of the Milky Way and as I've sent my camera pointing it towards the south, uh, there's all of this red stuff appearing and I thought maybe my camera's overheating, but then it dawned on me I was capturing an aurora. Now, not all of us are lucky enough to experience an aurora, but right now we're going through the 11 year solar cycle that's due to peak next year. And with this peak is coming more and more aurora activity for us on Earth. So what do you need to know to capture the aurora with your camera if you're lucky enough to be somewhere to see it? First things first, you're going to need a tripod, pretty much essential. Uh, you're going to be taking long exposures, at least a couple of seconds, maybe out to 15, 30 seconds at a time. So getting yourself a good sturdy tripod, highly recommended. Now with your tripod, just by the way, red hot tip, if you do have a more lightweight tripod or like a travel tripod, try not to extend the last legs. Now the legs on mine are pretty thick, but those travel tripods are actually pretty spindly and this is the weakest point. So don't extend these, extend the rest. And also if you have a tripod where the center column can extend, I highly recommend you actually keep that down because extending the center column will reduce the tripod stability, especially if it's a lightweight one. So your camera, DSLR, mirrorless, full frame, APS-C or crop sensor, or even micro four thirds. For auroras, these are all fair game. So this is a Canon EOS R, which is a full frame sensor. So full frames do handle high ISO that bit better than crop sensors and especially compared to micro four thirds. But I've been seeing some Aurora photos come out being shot with iPhones and smartphones. So you can do it with just about any camera you can get your hands on. You do want a wide lens. So for full frame cameras, something around 16 mil, if you can, at least 24 in my opinion. For crop sensor, cameras something at least 18 mil wide preferably 10 11 mil if you can get your hands on it and the reason for this is we're still restricted a little bit in our maximum exposure time if we don't want stars to obviously trail in the image Aurora photography is much like astrophotography in a lot of the settings that we use, although there are a few little changes, which is going to be dependent on how bright and active the Aurora is. We do want to be in manual mode, okay? So the priority modes aren't going to work here. The camera's just got no idea what you're trying to achieve when you're pointing it up into a dark sky. So manual mode all the way for Aurora photography. Your aperture, you'll generally want as wide as possible. So if you've got an f2.8 lens, go to that. Although there is something to be said for stopping your aperture down just a little bit, maybe to f4, f5.6, and that can just bring a little bit extra sharpness to your image if your lens is maybe a bit soft at those wide open apertures. Hopefully if you do have that wide angle lens, plan on going up to 15 seconds maximum and you'll be usually pretty safe to prevent those stars from trailing. Now, when it comes to setting your exposure length with your camera, you've got to make sure you are shooting in seconds. Now, some people actually make the uh, mistake of setting their cameras to 1 15th or 1 5th of a second. This is nowhere near long enough. What you need to do is keep on scrolling until you see those little inches appear and now your camera is shooting in seconds and you're going to get the proper length exposure that you need. The two variables when photographing an Aurora is really gonna be a mix of your shutter speed and your ISO. So 
I did say that you want to be a max of 15 seconds with your exposure, but this is going to depend on how bright the aurora is and how active, like those curtains waving back and forth in the sky. The longer the exposure, some of that definition, those columns, will start blurring, motion blurring away. So you'll still get the beautiful colors, but you won't see the same structure. And sometimes that means exposures of down around five seconds or maybe even less. But as your exposure time goes down, typically your ISO needs to come up a bit. So you would start at about 1600 ISO, which is not too high, but you may need to go to 3200 or even 6400, depending on how long or short your exposure times are. So if you start at 15 seconds, and let's say you're using an ISO of 1600, if you go down to below 10 seconds, like just below 10 seconds, you would need to raise your ISO from 1600 to 3200 for the same brightness in the image. And if you then took your exposure time down lower again, down to say five seconds or four seconds, your ISO pop it from 3200 up to 6400 for the same brightness. And the way you're going to work out which amount of seconds or ISO is going to work for you is preview as you go. So make sure you're reviewing the shot in the back of the camera after each one, just to be certain, is it too bright? Is it not bright enough? Maybe you've gone a bit overboard and now it's really sort of starting to blow out. So you will need to go through a little bit of trial and error. Most cameras have a hard time focusing when it's really dark. So autofocus probably isn't going to be an option for you and you'll want to set the camera to manual focus. To get focus at night, hopefully you can see a bright light in the distance or maybe you've got a really bright torch and you, you can hit a tree that's at least 20, 30 meters away, get focus off that and then point up into the night sky. You might also be lucky and maybe something like Mars or another bright object is in the sky. You can point your camera up to that get your focus and then reframe so that you've got your composition just how you want it. Something to turn off in your camera settings is long exposure noise reduction and high ISO noise reduction. You just need to go through your camera setup to find these. So what these settings do is if you have a 10 second exposure and the camera finishes, it'll feel like it's then locked up because it's now taking another shot of 10 seconds, a dark frame, and the goal is to reduce some of the noise that the camera produces. In my experience, the juice ain't worth the squeeze. So waiting that extra time between images to me is often not worth it. I prefer to leave it off and software technology for noise reduction these days is pretty good. To have the best chance to photograph an aurora, you really want to be pointing either north if you're in the northern hemisphere or south if you're in the southern hemisphere, and you want to make sure that you're not pointing over light pollution. So you really want to get away from any cities or towns as much as practical. But for me in Canberra, for example, if I go north and end up shooting back across the lights of Canberra, the light pollution is just too much. It's going to wash out the sky. You also want to try and avoid nights where there's a big moon, for example, but we often don't get to choose when the lady dances. So you want to take just about any opportunity you can to capture an aurora. Just know that under a properly dark sky when there's no moon or very little moon, you're just going to get some better results. So what are you waiting for? Get out there and capture something amazing.